In the Minecraft building community, things have shifted from just using gradients to builders becoming artists, utilizing full-on color theory in their creations. People are talking about using blocks simply as colors instead of what the block is supposed to be. Today, I'll do my best to show you how to do this so that you can become a better builder in Minecraft. Before starting a new mega build, let's review color theory itself and don't worry, I'll keep it short and simple. This is a color wheel. Well, at least as good as I could get it in Minecraft. And don't worry for you guys wondering, it works without shaders as well. In fact, let's do this section without shaders because I know some of you guys watching will want to use this without using shaders. Because, let's face it, shaders like these make everything just look a little bit better, but I will be using them in the building section later on. Color wheel is the foundation of color theory, so we'll need this to come up with nice color combinations, also known as color harmony. Creating color harmony can be done in two ways. The first one is by picking analogous colors. It is done by picking one color, in this case I chose magenta wool, then looking at the wheel and seeing what's next to that color. So we got magenta, purple, pink and red. And that is kind of the gradient that I made over here. So analogous colors are mainly used for picking nice gradients between colors. Second method is complementary colors. This can be done by picking one color, in this case pink, and then looking at the wheel to look what is directly opposite of it. In this case, that is sort of a limey green. I have to point out that this color is not perfect since, for example, red's complementary color is actually green. But that isn't really on the other side of this wheel because I had to make some adjustments in Minecraft. Anyways, for pink, the complementary color is a lime green. But I also picked a little bit of a darker green because it is also quite nice for a complementary color to use one color the complementary color of that, and then use an analogous color from that limey green. So I could have gone with a yellowy, but I could have also gone with a darker green, which is what I picked over here for a nice looking block palette. And there is actually a third way to create color harmony, and it is by basing the colors off of nature. So we've got nature based over here with a yellow, green, and red, which technically a limey green, yellow, and red don't really create harmony when looking at the theory. But since your eyes are used to seeing this in nature, it doesn't really look that weird. For example, you've got grass with poppies and dandelions, or maybe like a rose with the sun in the background. This one is a little more touchy-feely and can be quite hard to get just right, so we won't really focus focus on this one, but I will give you an example later on. Next up we got color context. Color can behave differently when paired with other colors or even shapes. Looking at these four squares, the red appears slightly different in some of them. On the black and light blue, the red can actually shine pretty well. On the white it looks a little bit duller and on the orange the red doesn't really pop at all. I really hope this translates well to YouTube because for me uh, I can pretty clearly see it especially in the orange and in the black but I hope that's the same for you. Taking this a bit further over here we have two shapes with a line inside of them. I really hope that this translates over to YouTube as well but at least for me the line on the left looks a little bit lighter than the line on the right. But in reality the line is the exact same color in each shape. And I can prove that to you by getting the purple concrete powder, going all the way over to this purple concrete powder, and as you can see, it is the exact same color, but it just looks slightly different when used in combination with the backgrounds. So now that we've learned about color theory, let's use that knowledge when building. Over here, I got three really basic stone houses that I believe anyone could probably whip up in a few minutes, so let's make them a bit more interesting. For the first one over here, we'll use the first method, the analogous method, to create a nice looking house. And for the second, we'll probably split off the roof and the walls themselves to get the complementary colors. Not sure which colors I'll use yet, but we'll see in a little bit. And the third one over here, I'll try to do my best at a nature color palette. So let's get started with the first one. For the analogous method, I just picked the same colors I laid out before for my block palette. Here I decided to start on the bottom of the house with a darker color, working my way up to lighter colors up top. By doing this, you can make sure that the eyes of the person looking at your building are moving upwards. This gives them a natural viewing experience since they automatically know where to look. Using world edit, I copied the first house over to the second one so that I could have a starting point for the complementary color. Since the complementary color of the roof, in this case red, is green, I made the rest of the house green. Once again, working from dark to light, making sure the house doesn't look too Christmassy or watermelony, which can be quite difficult to do with this color palette.
Finally, for a nature-based house, since I already had green and red, I decided to add some yellow to get the same example as I showed you before. Here I made the foundation of the house yellow, and to give it some more interest, I changed the red roof frame for a yellow one as well. Now I'm gonna be really honest, are these three houses the best thing I've ever built? No. Do they look good? Well that's in the eye of the beholder. But you can't deny that the theory is here. We've got a nice gradient from purple to red all over this house. Then I kept the roof for it and I changed out the walls for a green to get the complementary colors. And then over here I tried to make it a bit more nature by implementing some yellow in there as well. Please keep in mind that especially from the analogous build over there, gradients work best on big scales. Like a lot of you are probably put off by the usage of sugar boxes and glazed terracotta over here. But looking from far away, they just turn into a color. Let me quickly showcase that as well. So over here I created a huge wall of the purple glazed terracotta, but then moving back, can start to see that as further back we move the more it just turns into purple until at a certain point we just keep on moving you can actually see the sugar boxes de-render in the houses over there but right now it just looks like a big box of purple and that is how coloring works so if you want to use your gradients make sure to use them in buildings that you kind of see in the background but if you do want to use gradients on buildings that you are like walking past like buildings that are close by Make sure that the textures inside of the block in that case aren't too contrasting. For example, this moss, green concrete powder and lime terracotta, they're really similar in you, so they don't really like change up the feeling that much when walking past it like this. It kind of looks natural, which of course can't be said for a purple glazed terracotta, purple shulker box and purple wool. That's just a little too much on the eye from this angle over here. The final thing I want to point out is restraint. Just because you can place multiple colors next to each other doesn't really mean that you should. This for example is a house mansion thingy that I'm building on a realm with some of my friends who are living over here. This is Bart over there is going to be living safe on and Hans is through the nether portal but it doesn't really matter for now. Since I can use like complementary colors like green for my red building this is probably something I'll do with like leaves or plants later on because I'm still building it it's not finished yet but that will look good together and I know it is but using too many colors might look a little bit weird. For example, if I start making all of these walls green, that would look a little off, but if I start placing a little bit of like mossy cobblestone over there, that could actually look quite nice, which is actually something that I might do now that I think about it. Anyways, the point that I want to give you is just kind of hold back on doing too much, because just because a roof like this looks kind of cool with like the darker red going to the bright red of the red wall, doesn't really mean that it will work the same way for the whole thing. As you might have seen with the three houses I did in the time-lapse, they look sort of slightly off, especially when you're making like a themed build, because red and green look good together. If you're making like a nether castle, which is like red and black, you shouldn't really put green in there as well, because well, there is no green in the nether, so it wouldn't make sense. Anyways, I really hope you learned something from this video. I would like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you hopefully in the next one. Bye-bye.